umbuzo ke kuthu Jesu kuzabe inyama The question being why should Jesus have come in the flesh Kukhazani lokho What is the explanation Kuthu aba prophet ba ba manga bazoba baningi fanele ukuthuhlukanise because it also says that there are many false prophets and we need discernment kakhulu kulezi zikhathi baningi abasho ukuthi bangaba prophet kanti bangaba prophet bamanga especially in this era where there are those who love to claim they are prophets but they are lying prophets manje ileli zilias khombisa ke ukuthi sizohlukanisa kanjani umoya weqiniso umoya kaNkulunkulu noma omoya womphiku Christ and this text helps us to understand <clears throat> and to correctly see the difference between the spirit of god the spirit of jesus and the spirit of the antichrist ekwathini yokuqala ka johane isahluko sesine so here in 1 john chapter 4 kusukele vesini lokuqala from the first verse as we've read ukuthi abathandekayo mani ngakholwa ibo bonke omoya Where we are told beloved do not believe every spirit but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. So how are we then to discern because it says there are many prophets but most uh, but there are many false prophets Bese kuthi ayazini umoya kaNkulunkulu ngalokhu And then it says but you will know the spirit of God through this Bonke omoya bavuma ukuthi Jesu Kristu ufikile enyameni Every spirit that confesses that Jesus has come in the flesh bangabantu bakankulunkulu is from God Manje kuchazani ukuthi Jesu wafika enyameni So what is the meaning therefore of Jesus being incarnated coming in the flesh baningi nezinyi inkole kolo ezivumayo ukuthi ujesu waba inyama waba umuntu wazalwa ngoba kuliqinisa emhlabeni noma bani uyazi ukuthi ujesu waba khona because it is admitted by most religions that there was a jesus he was there in the flesh kodwa no moya womphiku Christ uyavuma ukuthi ujesu waba inyama but the spirit of the antichrist does it confess that jesus came in the flesh kodwa umphiku Christ hayi ukuthi uyamphika u Christ but do remember that the antichrist does not mean that he denies Christ is existing kodwa umphiku Christ ungumphiku Christ ngobo uthathi sikhundla sika Christ the antichrist is one who replaces Jesus Christ ages bukisiseke ukuthi kuchazana ukuthi Jesus weza enyameni so let us therefore look more carefully at the meaning of Jesus coming in the flesh u Jesus ungunkulunkulu qobo lwakhe kanti ungumuntu qobo lwakhe Jesus is both God himself and man himself kuthi wakonke okudaliweyo kwadalwa uyena futhi kwadalelwa yena and we are told 
that all things were created by him and unto him. Which shows that Jesus is God, for he is the creator of everything. He is also the Alpha and the Omega, Alpha being that he was there from the beginning. And has created all things. He created heaven and earth. From the very beginning, right to the end. Jesus is God Himself. He is the Spirit. But now think. He came down and became flesh. Became fully human like you and me. While being God, simultaneously. Known as the Son of God. Our doctors who know the human body so well, they say a child receives its blood via the Father. The body from the mother and in that way he is both God and man and that confuses some people they say how is it possible to be both at the same time it is a great secret. But if you understand that the blood comes from the Father, and then it is said in the Bible that Jesus was the son not of Joseph but the son of God. That is why his divine blood is so precious. We are never to take lightly his blood. If you are washed in the blood of Jesus, remember it is the blood of God. You should treat it as being so precious. How carefully you should treat the blood of the Lord. We are washed by the blood of God, the Most High, not Joseph's blood. How precious. 
Aksilo ni kazi, elifana ne kazi lako. Kodwa elifana no pezu bonke. Shouldn't that blood be to you, for it is the blood of God himself. It is not just any blood. Ninen vumi zono zedu liti izwi. Oz piga ayu agai upumelele. Kodwa ozi vuma izono. Azi yege. You confess your sin. The Bible says he confesses and forsakes his sin, shall obtain mercy. Let's consider. The preciousness of that blood. How carefully, in what manner should you be living in this world if you have been washed by that blood? The body is from the mother. The soul is in the blood. Manje uma kutua uje sube nekazi lo muntu. Kushuti ube zoba isoni esi njengawe. If he had just human blood, then he would be a sinner just like you. Kotwa ube nge nasono. But he was sinless. His body, his body he received from Mary. That is why we know him as fully man. But the blood from the Father, from God the Father, that is why we know him as fully divine too. Manje now faith. Now faith in this precious blood, the faith that believes that this blood is so precious. And for the one who tramples this blood underfoot, Woe to that person. Go in Martini, Guabasa Roma, Isatugo eight. In Romans chapter eight, Cotas Calibis in Locada, and we can read from verse one. Cantalo, Aguse Cugula, so Aguaba Gu Christu Jes. Goguba unte to gamoya wogu pila ogu Christu Jesu ungi kulu lilem tetweni weson o no ogu fa. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, for the law of the Spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. I've said that he had the, the body from Mary. That is why we are sinners, for sin dwells in us in the body. And sin 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 dwells in our flesh. And we live in it. Even when you try and fight against the flesh, you fail. One person said that he will stop smoking. 
Beliguye. But that demon of smoking was in him. And by his, and in his determination to stop smoking, he went to the outside long drop toilet. He took his cigarettes and threw it down into the pit together with the one that was still in his mouth. But after two or three days, off he was to the shop to buy his cigarettes again because of this fierce craving that he had. This sin, this sin indwelt him. Another old man who wanted to stop with his cigarettes, he had heard that it is bad for him and that it is sinful. A pipe. He smoked with a pipe. And he said, Lord, I'm stopping today. Stopping today with this because I hear that you are my, I'm the temple for you. This is the end of it. He took a spade, went to his garden, went to the corner, and he dug a hole and buried his pipe. And covered, covered it too. But after three days, the cravings were so terrible, he went back to the corner of his garden, dug it up, shook off the sand, and smoked again. Sin indwells you in the flesh. You try and stop, it's unstoppable. And drug addicts too, they say that they try to stop but they just cannot leave the habit because this habit, this addiction dwells in them. And even though God has told you Stop with your lying, stop with your anger, stop with your swearing, stop with this and your killing and your smoking, but nevertheless you continue. But 
Though you try ever so hard, you just cannot stop, for the temper indwells you. This irritability is inside you, it lives in you. Uchesuge ene kaze li kuku. Kote nemzi nomzimba one son. Jesus with his precious divine blood has a body nevertheless the body of flesh. Manje wena ufunukuye kalento kopayegeki. Now you try and stop it but it's unstoppable. Loko kuskombisa incwadi base Roma isahluko sesikhombisa. And that points us to the the Roman letter in the seventh chapter. Verse 24. Wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now in ancient times, Paul and the people of his day fully understood when this expression was used, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? We in this, this era, we don't understand the implications of this wretchedness and this body of death. Now, in ancient times, this was the practice. A person wasn't hanged or given a lethal injection. But if he had killed somebody and he was caught, they would take the corpse of the murdered person and tie it to the murderer. Hands to hands, arms to arms, mouth to mouth, eyes to eyes, legs to legs. The person had this corpse tied to him. And if he tried to get up, it was difficult for this corpse was tied to him. And if he tried to walk, it was with great difficulty, for his legs were tied to the legs of the corpse. He would walk down the street and cry out, O oh, wretched man that I am, who will set me free from this body of death? Remember this body of death who he had murdered was tied to him body part to body part, eyes to eyes. And 
and this body was busy putrefying. As you know that a corpse in the hot sun goes rotten very quickly. <laughs> and it's tied to him. <laughs> and the worms, are, they begin to move around and, and go into him too. And these maggots, even mouth to mouth to the corpse, would go. And these maggots would go into nose to nose, terrible smell. That is why even a loved one, even though you love them so dearly, but you will put them away in the grave. This putrid corpse was now causing him to die, for the maggots were getting into him. The rottenness was invading him. He would cry out, Oh, woe is to me, wretched man that I am. Who will set me free from this body? No one could. So look at mankind. Look at the drug addict. He tries to stop, he can't. Sexually immoral, tries to stop with it, he can't. Filthy thoughts tries to stop. They just the thoughts come back to him, for they are in him. They are operative in him. And he too cries out, Oh, woe is me, wretched man that I am. Who will set me free from this body of death? For this body. For this corpse is tied to him day and night. And he will be killed by it because of the corpse. Umuze no mugude uja umina mundo osisi umundo osisi ubano zomkulula ageko zomkulula kulesisi tumbes bolile. And the cry of that person could be heard afar off, because no one was allowed to come and set him free from this body. Umkulunkulu no. ababo na bante batanda, ababo na be fakabi. God saw humankind loving people and seeing them die. So is Tumbu God sees mankind in its wretched state, loves them nevertheless. He sees them dying, the sinner dying with these evil habits and addictions, this messing around, the sexual immorality, little girls already busy with sex, boys as well. And they cried. 
and they can't stop. Look at the disrespect. Look at the rebelliousness of young people today. One can mention so many things. You can go to a jail and see how full they are. Do you know this liberation where you've been bound to the corpse of sin and you set free? But here is the marvelous thing. For he, he goes on to say, Thanks be to God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ in the flesh, He is able to set us free from this body of death. And then it goes on to say, therefore there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life has set me free from the law of sin and death. God gave us the law. Don't steal. Don't fight. Don't be adulterous. Promiscuous, God don't steal. But the Lord does not help us. What the Lord what the law could not accomplish, Jesus Christ did by coming in the flesh. For there was no sin in Jesus, in Christ. He was pure. So if you're troubled, there is something that you're trying to stop, but you can't. Come to Jesus. He will set you free. Because 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 sin indwells us, we cannot get victory over sin ourselves. And thus, thus it was. God, seeing our predicament, sent Jesus Christ, born in the flesh, so that if you come to Jesus, if you receive Him, and He comes inside you, He conquers our sin because you begin to live His life. Ngoba, Lagu Matthew, Kuku Roma 8. For in Romans 8. Ngoba, Umte, Togamoya, Wogu Pila, Ogu Christu Jesu. For the spirit of life, it says in the verse 2, this law of the spirit of life in Christ comes and sets us free from the law of sin and death. It is what it is wonderful to have faith, 
to be a believer in this world because Jesus Christ sets free, liberates you from your sin. And says, for that which the law could not do, the law which says, you shall not steal, you go into a shop and you grab something, you can't stop with it. That sin is unstoppable. Even if you beat that person, whip them with a shambok, they will go back to the sin again. Because the sin of being like a pig is inside him. The satanic dog is inside you. That is why your behaving like a dog does not stop with you. But if Christ Jesus indwells you, even if sin is put right in front of you, you can resist it. You are for you have a new law, a new nature inside you. Take a chicken, take its little uh, chicks, see if they go into a water. Even if the water is close, they are not tempted to swim because by instinct, it is not like a duck who loves water. That is why Christmas is so special because a person who was rebellious has left their home and they are just wanderers in the world. But if Christ Jesus comes into them, they are changed because the law of death has been put to the end. Put to an end. That is why the Bible says, therefore there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. I once heard a wonderful story. Atinangusbanbani, no misi pali zingwati pale lumfana. Aku kongoba umoya wokupila. Kachesu kristu kuye. I heard of this infamous criminal who was in and out of jail doing terrible things, but he met with Christ. And from that time on, 
everybody was saying, we don't have to watch out for him anymore. He stopped with what he was doing. We don't have to guard our little girls again. We don't have to uh, guard him and the things that he used to do. He's a changed person. And even if you leave money, and even if they left money in the home with this converted criminal inside the home, they didn't fear that their money would go because the Bible says there is therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Because they are, they are parted. They have parted from sin. They don't need to be policed anymore because the Spirit of Jesus Christ is inside that person. Isn't the gospel wonderful? The event of Christmas, do you see how great it is? You don't have to go around begging for Christmas gifts because this is the greatest gift that Jesus Christ comes into you and he conquers, he gets, he changes things so that you're no longer bound to the body of death. For the one who is the Alpha and the Omega indwells you. You don't have to try and be holy because anyway, Christ Jesus who indwells you makes you holy. Now the spirit that agrees with that is the spirit of God. But the spirit or the person who rejects this truth is the spirit of the Antichrist for they live in sin. I've said, I've said that the spirit of the Antichrist replaces, substitutes itself for Jesus Christ. I don't know whether this is understandable to you or not. You answer me. You tell me. Is it understandable? It shouldn't trouble you. You can leave. Even if Satan tempts you. Even if Satan tempts you. Even if he comes with the old... Even if Satan comes to you with your old sins, that is no trouble for you because the one who indwells you is greater than he that is in the world. Shall we pray? We thank you, Lord, for this great mystery of the gospel and this great work which you did, which we remember at Christmas. Liberating, liberating us from sin and death. 
washing us snow white in the blood of the lamb the spotless blood of the lamb amen amen